very much for uh, inviting me. Yeah, so when Jorgen asked me to give a talk with only 20 minutes, I have no idea what I should talk about. For any single topic, you know, 20 minutes, which is, so I thought that maybe just have more topics, and each topic to be really, really short. Um, <laughs> that may work. <laughs> so there's nothing uh, technical detail. Um, so the first topic is about um, recurrent neural network versus, versus uh, dynamic system. So one is a generative model versus discriminant model. And this is a very, very fundamental issue in voice recognition, in natural language processing, and a number of other applications uh, that have been working on. And the second topic is to look into this generative model in such a way that we actually can characterize correlation structure uh, in the model. Um, how to do that in a recurrent network is less clear, but I'm going to show you some of the examples to show you how the memory structure can be actually analyzed really, really rigorously in generative models. Hopefully, that can inspire some of this uh, similar analysis for recurrent neural network. And the third topic is that's related to a uh, recurrent network that will be uh, the kind of generalization of sequence to sequence learning that underlies the current recurrent, uh, recurrent neural network into something that's more general in terms of structure to structure. Uh, learning because in natural language uh, understanding uh, dialogue and a whole bunch of applications we you know I personally just believe that certain kind of structure like tree structure just couldn't be ignored I you know a lot of people actually have a debate with me as to whether sequence to sequence learning can do everything uh, I would think that if we can do structure to structure learning directly uh, which may be a, some kind of generalization over the uh, recurrent neural network technology I think you'll be solving the problem in terms of language understanding, uh, you know, dialogue system, and other NLP operations much more uh, effectively. So number one, the topic one is uh, I want to very briefly touch on two types of sequence models. Uh, in the first one is, of course, a, a recurrent network. It's a very, very powerful model. And at the same time, if ever, most, I, I'm not sure how, much, how many of you work on uh, control theory. So I came from IEEE uh, sort of background, and I actually go to a lot of presentations in signal processing, you know, control, uh, in, in, in engineering uh, community. So nonlinear dynamic system is a very, very essential part of the whole, uh, the whole you know, mathematical foundation. How do these two set of models are connected to each other? So just to give you an example, uh, I think uh, just a few months ago, I was giving a talk to, uh, to signal processing, machine learning, and control uh, uh, in the audience. I talk about this recurrent neural network in terms of speech recognition, in terms of algorithm. They said, gosh, all these powerful techniques that we have been using for nonlinear dynamic system for the control, you know, for, for, for tons of applications, where do they fit into that? So I'm going to use the opportunity to, you know, that gave me a lot of thinking about these two kinds of models. Uh, which actually related back to you know, some of the speech recognition what we have been doing about 10 years ago before neural network uh, uh, deep learning actually took over the world. Um, so let me uh, start, start this topic. So I drew this diagram. Actually, I gave uh, like three, four hours of tutorial in, uh, in our uh, speech uh, conference uh, two years ago. You know, I, I, actually, I used this slide to to illustrate the contrast between a recurrent network versus dynamic systems. It looks, if you just write down mathematical equations, they are identical, no difference whatsoever. And that's the way I started thinking about the connection between two kinds of models. Mathematically, you don't even see any difference. Now, if you look at the details, then everything is different from each other. So you're, if you are talking about uh, recurrent neural network, the input is your observation that goes into controlling dynamics of the hidden layer. And then you have this is uh, what's called, you know, sometimes people call it state space model. Uh, this is state equation, this is observation equation. And then the hidden states, continuing the hidden state is used to, to produce um, the labels. Okay, so think about this why to be the labels. Uh, and for example, if you are using uh, recurrent network to do speech recognition, then this Y would be 
one hot uh, vector that corresponds to each of these units in your rec uh, recognition. Actually, in early days, uh, early days means about three or four years ago, when we actually did speech recognition using recurring network, this dimensionality can go up to about several thousands because it's not just the phonemes, you know, HMM states, but also the neighboring dependencies. Now, if you go back to our dynamic system view of our dynamic, you know, for speech recognition, we actually, myself, actually started doing this model about, you know, about for, for almost about 10 years, five, about five years in University of, what, what, University of Waterloo before I moved to Microsoft, and also another five years even down the road into doing this model. So the idea here is a way of generalizing hidden Markov model of recognition, speech recognition, by simply putting the continuous state, uh, discrete states in hidden Markov into continuous states. Think about it this way. Mathematically, it's identical to this. Now, the main difference is that now, the input that drives dynamics now, uh, H, H is the same as H, rather than the input from the observation uh, that actually eventually led to the uh, sort of prediction of the output over here, it, uh, you know, the, the discrete symbols. We use the discrete symbols as the input to the dynamic system so that, uh, so that it, you actually can think about this, you know, the discrete variables. Of course, you have, there is a very interesting coding here. For any discrete input, you have to turn them into a vector so that can be put into this computer. It's, this is a way of embedding, right? So you embed the, um, the semantic, uh, lab, uh, semantic um, like, like word units or phoneme units or triphone units, whatever those, embed them into what's called, you know, at that time we call a target vector that drives dynamic system. So you have to have this mapping from discrete to continuous mapping. But that mapping is learned automatically using common filter um, and many, uh, the extended common filter plus many class of uh, nonlinear dynamic system identification and estimation methods. And then through this uh, dynamics, you use this observation equation to generate the observation. So X now, go, uh, in this recurring neural, neural network, it goes to the input of the we call the hidden dynamics. And uh, in a uh, dynamic system approach, the input over here to the dynamic system, the, uh, the hidden dynamical uh, evolution, actually is the embedded version of the, uh, the symbols. And then you use this nonlinear equation here to generate the observation. So the, okay, good. So, so the, hope, the hope is that if you have this nice gen, uh, generative model to generate the right kind of uh, observation that can match with your observation, then the, you know, whatever labels over here ought to be reasonably good. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to generate the right one, right? And of course, once you have that system to run uh, you know, for the generation, how do you do recognition? You just use Bayes' rule. So Bayes' rule allows you to compute the probability for the sequence, you know, the label sequence, given whatever input you choose, whatever the logic you can get. I mean, it's a very different philosophy of doing recognition. So this is the dominant uh, paradigm for recognition up until about five, six years ago when deep learning took over. So in terms of, um, you know, diagram, you can see that this is the generative approach. This is a, a sort of this is called discriminator approach using recurrent network. And actually, if you look at the equation, they're, they're all identical, except how you put your labels, whether the label uh, is put into the controlling of the dynamics, or is the label the one that is coming out of the, um, the observation equation. Um, but anyway, so I, so, so there are a lot of details about this generative model. So this is a generative model, and this is a dynamic model. And of course, people, at this, at this day, so we spent lots of time working on this. As, as, a, matter of, as a matter of fact, let me, uh, let me show you. Oops, it doesn't work. Huh. It gets stuck here. Huh. Anybody? Get, get stuck here. Um, so what I would like to talk to you, no, uh, is there any way to, to fix this? Huh. Okay, let me do one more time. Okay. Oh, yeah, got it. 
Thank you very much. Yeah, so this is the kind of dynamic system we have been using. It's actually very deep dynamic. That was about 10 years ago. Uh, since this uh, symposium, a lot of things about history. Right? So I, I want to review part of history that led to the current kind of revival of, of deep learning in, uh, in speech recognition. So this is the kind of model that we have been using. Uh, it's a generation model. So the symbols at the top level, and then this is the target. So you have to do this kind of embedding to get a continuous target variable that drive that dynamic system. And then, of course, uh, one beautiful thing about generative model for dynamics is that you can have all the interpretation. Not only can you have interpretation, you can actually embed your domain knowledge in terms of dependencies about so articulation and uh, in terms of acoustics, in terms of noise. All the things can be really beautifully done. Okay? So, uh, so this is uh, sort of the background about this model. Well, this is a very simplified version, but in reality, there are many layers of this. You can actually embed all kinds of domain knowledge into the system. Um, so now the real question for the future uh, you know, uh, sort of development, it really is how to combine this. This is very hard to embed domain knowledge into the system. I think everybody who works on neural net will realize how difficult it is. Even the very simple fact that the observed the noise speech is simply just a linear combination of the waveform between noise and, and speech, clean speech. Such a simple sort of generative properties, it's very hard to be embedded into, uh, into neural network. But it's very natural to put it in here. All you have to do is uh, you take the sum, you take the logarithm, it's all done. Right? So that gives you one layer in the uh, generative model of the um, of dynamical system. So, it's very, so, so this approach and this approach have pros and cons. And that's actually what I try to, uh, this is what I try to, oops, yeah, so. So this is uh, something that I try. Oops, why is it? But so we have yeah, yeah, efficient. So let, let, let me keep going. Otherwise, the time is. Uh, huh. Yeah. So I have this table to outline the pros and cons of generative modeling approach versus discriminative approach in terms of, in terms of um, recurrent neural network versus dynamic system. So one is that it's relatively easy to embed domain knowledge into generative model compared with the recurrent neural network. But on the other hand, recurrent neural network automatically learn to do discrimination through backpropagation invented by you know, a number of people, uh, ori originally done by, uh, by Paul, I think. You, you heard the great story. Um, whereas in a discriminant to generative model approach, it's relatively difficult to do discrimination because all you do is that you embed the knowledge, you can generate the sound. You know, or other text, whatever. Um, and how to do discrimination on this kind of model is very difficult. So in, in speech recognition community, I think over, 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 one, over 15 years, uh, since the late uh, 90s all the way up until about, uh, you know, over the 10 to 15 years of the work, people actually managed to do discriminatory training, learning using generative model of hidden Markov model with the Gaussian mixture model. It's a very intensive work over there, whereas going into this generative dynamic system is very hard, whereas in recurrent neural network, it's just straightforward uh, based upon uh, recurrent neural network. So actually, I can't, so I, okay, so we get stuck again. Uh, okay, so I have three minutes, so I think it's okay for me just to, to use one. Uh, to cover this one one topic here. Okay. Ah, that's not good. Oh yeah, now keep going. So the second topic, the second topic. Let me go there very quickly. So the second topic is that in generative sequence model, uh, the uh, temporal correlation in terms of the memory structure uh, can be analyzed rather rigorously, you know, using perturbation analysis. So I have to go back to some of the earlier work that we did. So this is the paper that actually. We wrote about, you know, with my graduate student about 20 some years ago. We actually did this kind of analysis. And the point is that at the end of this analysis, so the way we do it is that if you do a sort of straightforward generative model like this, and then you can analyze the correlation structure, you can actually see that the memory just exponentially decays. This is very similar to a uh, to, uh, recurrent neural network. Now, if you do, uh, oops, yeah, and then so let me, the, the, the point is that if you do more advanced 
Um, so this is the paper, literally what, uh, what, what we did before. So if you look at the, uh, this type of uh, regenerative model, it's kind of time series analysis. Not only do you have the nonlinear term, but also you add the linear term. And in that paper, it's about 20 years ago we did this. We actually can prove that um, the uh, memory also is exponentially decaying, but it's much, much more slowly. So since I do have time uh, limit over here, uh, and I'm just going to mention that if we actually add this linear term, the, the memory structure is decaying much more slowly compared with just linear, uh, non-linear prediction. And that sort of reminded uh, probably everybody about the rest net versus highway net, right? So if I'm talking about highway net, I think uh, Rapage probably you will talk about that. Uh, and the one uh, you know, with, uh, with the group over there, if you have purely nonlinear uh, uh, system, the memory decays quickly. It's very hard to do replication all the way to very, very big, uh, you know, very deep network. Whereas if you add additional linear term, very similar to the kind of fun, uh, finding that we did uh, many years ago using generation model. So that, that's the kind of correspondence that I'm looking at. And the same thing happens for residual network. So adding linear term in addition to the nonlinear term really help to, in many ways. You can do a rigorous analysis in the generative model domain, the one, we, you know, the paper that I showed earlier about 20 some years ago. And most more re recent work here directly does this kind of uh, a prediction with the mixed linear model and nonlinear model uh, that actually account for a huge amount of success in recurrent, uh, in the in neural network domain. So the final topic, it's going to be quick. Uh, it's a sequence sequence model based on recurrent neural net network, especially uh, with the LTM embedded over here, give rise to very powerful sequence learning in, that account for all the success over here. Whereas how do we do uh, this type of similar kind of learning for this into the structure? So let me give you one uh, sort of, uh, one of uh, a flavor of this. So if you want to do the mapping from sequence, uh, structure to structure going over here, it's very hard to do. I mean, unless you are actually expert in uh, you know, NLP, you do semantic parsing, tons of rules. Uh, this is my last slide, actually. Now, the way to do this, uh, to convert this kind of structure to structure learning, one way of doing that, what there are actually quite a number of ways we are looking into, is that you map this structure into neural representation in terms of their kind of isomorphic representation. You can, if you have high enough dimension, you actually always map from here to here. And then, of course, you do all the neural net learning. This diagram just shows you how, you know, kind of learning you can do. And then, if this kind of, uh, if this kind of mapping is sort of bi-directional, if you can recover this back to here, you actually can recover the output of neural learning directly mapped back over here. Therefore, all the learning is done in neural domain, whereas all this structure is going to be automatically emerged from the learning. And that's kind of uh, some of the research we are currently pursuing. Okay, thank you very much.